you mentioned sort of rectifying mistakes and and doing that is going to be the main task you would imagine this summer now um, and to do so there's going to be a list of midfielders and we're going to run through a few of them now most of whom you mentioned in your article after the fact about the Jude Bellingham news just last night um, you wrote that Mason Mount a player that's been spoken about a lot in Liverpool circles in recent weeks and even months it's fair to say obviously has a contract dispute this is going on at Chelsea, whatever you want to call it. Um, you wrote that he was emerging as the new priority at Liverpool. Where do you think that situation lies right now? Well, Bellingham was the was the priority. Mount was second, so it's, yeah. by definition, he's now the top one. Um, I think it's an interesting one. It goes back to what we talking then about uh, Klopp wanting his business done early. I think he won't want to get involved in a Mount contract dispute or whatever it is with Chelsea. Mm-hmm. He'll probably say to him, well, do you want to come or not? Yeah. He says no, they just move on. With Mounds, again, you know, it's he's English, which is going to help them, as we mentioned before. Mm-hmm. He knows the Premier League, which I think is something else that Liverpool are going to have to look at because they want players who can hit the ground running. Yeah. They go back to Wijnaldum and players like that. And it's funny, you look back and you go, Wijnaldum, Shakiri, um, Van Dijk, Mane, Salah. Yeah. All of those players were able to come in straight away. Whereas it took Firmino, Fabinho, Cater to a degree, took them a little bit longer to acclimatise. 100%. So that's another thing that they're probably going to bear in mind. They're not just going to go out and buy three players from abroad. They're probably going to be players, if not from the Premier League, then they have featured in the Premier League in the past, so they know what to expect. So yeah, Mount, he will be somebody that's very high up there. He's, at the moment, he will be the priority. But again, it's, it could very quickly change if he decides, well, I want to drag this Chelsea thing out. So Liverpool will just go, well, we can't go, you know, can't be waiting for you. We need to move on. Yeah, 100%. It feels to me as though for Mason Mount, he is he is waiting for Chelsea, essentially. I still feel, this is a personal opinion, I should say that, I still feel like his preference would be to stay at Chelsea and get the new deal. I mean, they've tried to go to the negotiating table a couple of times, haven't they, with that one? And what fascinates me about this deal more than anything, Ian, is, is the fee. Because I've seen it reported recently that it might still be around the 60, 70 million mark. Now, a Liverpool really inclined to pay that much for a brilliant footballer, wonderfully talented player, young enough, fits the profile, um, England international, the homegrown aspect, like you say, but with one year left on his contract, are they likely to go and pay 60, 70 for him? Well, they've already done this before with Alex Oxley chamberlain which was six years ago, and they paid £35 million for him. Mm-hmm. So if you go by how the market's been inflated since then, you are looking at about £50 million. Pounds. Yep. I don't think they'll go much more over than that. Well, I wouldn't be anyway. Mm-hmm. Depends how much they want to play Come back to, again to Bellingham Amount. What you would say about Bellingham Amount is that neither of those are a defensive midfielder, no. which is the issue that Liverpool have had more than anything, or rather, the issue that's emerged over the last six to nine months, which Definitely. is what Klopp could not have seen coming. And that is what I think is the reason why they've stepped away from Bellingham, because they know they've got to invest in another defensive midfielder. Now, Mount's not that. Bellingham's not that. Maybe they've just... This is just me not guessing. This is maybe they've gone, well, we can't get both of them. We can get one of them and bounce obviously cheaper. So I think the mo- most money in my mind, I wouldn't be surprised. And again, this is just guesswork. This is going to what I actually think and what's needed in the team. Mm-hmm. The most money will be spent on a defensive midfielder. That's a fascinating. And you know what? I actually make you right. For a long time, sort of over the summer and last season even, I felt like we needed an understudy to Fabinho, someone to come and take the pressure off him. But now, given his form this season, I don't think I'm too out of place saying we probably need a replacement for Fabinho, I think we might need. So that's a really interesting viewpoint. Um, and I want to come on to a possibility in that, and it's actually not somebody you named, but Declan Rice's name has been circulating a little bit. Now, it's a similar situation, actually, in many senses, in terms of coming into the final year of his deal at West Ham. And he's a player that West Ham have previously demanded or said they would like over £100 million for. Now, they're not likely to get that sort of money for him either, are they? No, and then you're looking at, well, Mount and Rice both entering the last year of the deals. Both of them for teams who aren't going to be in Europe next season. Well, unless well, actually that's not even true, is it? West Ham West could, Ham win. could, West yeah, Ham yeah. could win. And, and Chelsea yeah. could win the Champions League. So well. at the moment, I don't know. You know, <laughs> you know, I don't necessarily think Real Madrid are brilliant, even though Liverpool. That's no, true. Um, then again, Chelsea aren't particularly great, but we have to work on the basis that possibly might not be in Europe. But more importantly, they're England internationals as well. Mm. There's a bit of a premium with that. Yeah. Again, we saw with Oxlade Chamberlain six years ago. So, I mean, then you're looking at 100 million for Rice and Mount. Now, would Liverpool want to sign both of them? Depends who else is there. I mean, they're not going to rule anything else, but, you know, Rice has been 
linked with a lot of other clubs. He was linked with Chelsea for going back to Chelsea for a long time, but obviously they've they've yeah. made about fifty seven signings since then. United, they're looking at players. I don't think Manchester City need one at the moment. I don't think anyway. So if Rice does want to go anywhere, I suppose he could go to Newcastle. So that'd be interesting if Liverpool and Newcastle end up in some kind of, you know, but again mm. that's just speculating over over any kind of players over the over the next uh, couple of months over the transfer window. So. No, yeah, Rice is an interesting one, but he's not he's not a name that I've heard mentioned with Liverpool anyway, let's put it that way. Okay, fair enough. Um another name then that you did mention in your article last night, Ian, was Jao Paulinha. Now, yeah. one that's come from a little bit left field, I suppose, in many senses, not in terms of the link to Liverpool, but in terms of this season, because he has been, I suppose, sort of <sighs> For Fulham as well, they've been outstanding, haven't they? They've come from nowhere in many senses. Nobody really expected them to have the campaign that they're having. But Paulinho has been at the heart of that and there has been some interest in him. And do you think he's a possibility for Liverpool? Well, we got told quite a few a few months ago now, actually, that Liverpool had a lot of players on the list. There was some talk of there being two lists, one if they get in the Champions League, one if they don't. I'm not entirely sure that was true. I think there may have been a list is if we get Jude Bellingham, is if we don't get him. And I think that's possibly where Liverpool are at the moment. There's a lot of, I mean, a word that gets, a phrase that's getting used a lot from inside the club is spinning plates, by which they don't know where they're finished in the league, although now it looks though they're not going to be in the Champions League. They don't know how much money they're going to have to spend with the investments, although obviously now it looks as though that's not going to be happening for the transfer window. But more importantly, they don't know what the other teams want and which other players are going to be moving around. There's a lot of teams who need midfielders, mm-hmm. not necessarily defensive midfielders, as you pointed out, but midfielders. Look at Man City. I mean, I think Silver, Gundogan, and there's another one who's, I can't remember the other one is, that's over 30 or above. So they're going to need a refresh. You know, United, possibly they'll look to, to go again. Chelsea will always want to sign players. Newcastle, I've already mentioned. Arsenal will want to strengthen yeah. because they'll be in the Champions League. So, so whether they finish first or second, they're still going to be in the top four. So there's going to be a lot of competition. It also means that a lot of players are going to be moving around and it's not going to be until the season finishes that things start moving. Mm-hmm. And I know that's pretty stating the obvious because, you know, the transfer window is open until July, but we know quite well that players talk, players move around and we know that the deals get done before then. Yeah. So that's why there's a lot of players on the list. And I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, we mentioned the, the lad from Fulham there, He's somebody he's coming Premier League. He's got a year's Premier League experience, like the Casado from Brighton as well. He's another one. Mm-hmm. I mean, and their two teams are obviously doing a lot better than people expected. Yeah. But they also play a kind of a way that Liverpool want to play. In terms of Brighton, it's quite it's attacking and it's 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 you know it's a bit, for Fulham it's a little bit the same, if a little bit more energetic than perhaps than Brighton. Brighton tends to use the possession a bit more. Mm-hmm. So these are players who wouldn't take that much adaptation. You wouldn't think to come into a Liverpool team, and especially the, it wouldn't be like going to, a, for example, I know they probably gonna, might get relegated to Bournemouth and go, well, what's this? They'll have been. They'll know, they'll know what to expect. They'll know what it's like to go to Goodison and play. They'll know what it's like to go to Old Trafford and play. Places like that. So it won't be new for them. And mm. I think that's why I was going back to what I said before. I think players with Premier League experience will be utmost in the minds of, of Liverpool. But that's not, that's not to say that they won't be looking abroad and going, well, we can... Nick a play here or there, which is they've done that in the past. Yeah, of course they have. Yeah, and I think I think you're right there. I think Liverpool do need sort of plug and play footballers for the Premier League because it has been such a disappointing season by Liverpool standards that fans, generally speaking, are gonna want to see a pretty immediate improvement. They're not the fans of the be all and end all in all this. Jurgen Klopp's gonna want to see a pretty immediate improvement to start of next season. That's why I think most of the business that we do see this summer is likely to be players that have that Premier League experience, like you say. And Paulinho is an interesting one. I don't think he's a name that will excite everybody, but he's had a really, really good season, like I mentioned before. He is 27, so age-wise, it's not the perfect fit, potentially. But what he is at that age, he is ready to go, isn't he? He is in the prime of his career, if you like. And you mentioned Caicedo there. I just touched on him. I think he's a fascinating one. He's a player I really like, but I wonder... He signed a new deal, didn't he, recently with Brighton, probably protecting his value more than anything. And we know Arsenal have been keen on him as well, as well as they have Declan Rice. I wonder whether there's a world whereby Arsenal might get one of them, can I say they were Rice, and Liverpool maybe pick up the other one, potentially? Well, yeah, but then, as I said before, you could throw Newcastle into that. There's a lot yeah. of teams now who, who are in that. But there's another lad who, uh, who plays for Southampton, uh, Lavia, is it? I can never pronounce his name. Yeah, he yeah. came from Man City, I think. He didn't came he? from Man City, but the complication there is that Man City got a buyback option. Now, 
<laughs> yeah, pretty sure if Liverpool go into, or not even just Liverpool, but one of the leading clubs goes over to that and says, can we buy him? Yeah. City will probably take him back and say, well, we'll sell him to you for a lot more money. So that's the complication there. So that would be an interesting one. But I, he's not a player that I've, I've heard been mentioned with Liverpool. But mm. now that Bellingham is off the list, it's going to be a lot more players. And what, what I think is quite interesting is that Bellingham isn't the only footballer who'll improve Liverpool's midfield. A lot of fans are getting really upset. And in some ways, he probably, while he would improve almost any team that he goes into, the position he plays is perhaps not even the one that Liverpool need most, as we were saying before, in midfield itself. No. So there are a lot of players out there who's got to improve Liverpool. They won't cost as much as Bellingham. They might not be as attractive names. Mm-hmm. Will they be able to move Liverpool back up to where they were in a couple of years? That's the real question that I think fans are looking at. But then I think expectations are going to have to be tempered for next season because... How many teams have gone from eighth to challenging for the title? You know what I mean? Even Arsenal finished fifth. Mm. So, last season. So, Liverpool next season are just going to be looking to get back into the Champions League and have some decent runs in, in some of the cup competitions. So, mm. it is a transition. I don't think the transition was as much as Klopp was expecting this season in terms of the way things have gone poorly. But he knew things were going to change. Mm. And they're going to change even more in the summer. So, it will have taken... Well, if, if if Liverpool take eighteen months to turn things around, well, they've already had nearly twelve. So yeah, you know, you'd probably settle. You'd probably settle for that, um, because you know, great teams don't just go on forever. Unfortunately, there has no. never been in a team that's just won everything. It's never happened. No, it's unfortunate, really, isn't it? Yeah, it's a shame. I wouldn't mind that. And there's one final name, Ian, I want to ask you before you go, because the last name you mentioned in your piece yesterday, um, Yuri Tielemans. Now, this is an interesting one, because he, of course, will be available for free this summer. He will be a free agent from Leicester. Do you envisage a world whereby Liverpool go and get that deal? Obviously, financially, it makes an abundance of sense. But do you think he is the type of player Liverpool should be looking to bring in? The only thing with that is that if you're buying Tielemans for nothing, he's the third midfielder of three. Yeah. So you have to have got two strong, energetic midfielders because Tielemans is quite classy. He's good on the ball, got a good shot on him, but he can't really run, let's be honest. And yeah. that's okay if you've got two other players who can do a load of running in midfield, but mm-hmm. you don't want it if he's going to be one of the two who's expected to, to get around the pitch. Because other people can do that with Thiago, for example. Thiago, if you've got two runs with Thiago, he can go and do his thing. So I do think that, that that's the only way you, you've seen Tielemans at, at Liverpool. And then, obviously, that most of the Leicester team could be up for sale if, if they go down. But then then why would you want to sign loads of Leicester players if they've got relegated? Yeah, that's the other Liverpool point, have shown, To be fair, Liverpool have shown in the past, Liverpool have shown in the past with Robertson, Wijnaldum, uh, Shaqiri, yeah. that they can take good players from relegated clubs. And it's not just them that's done it. Other teams have done that. Yeah, there's value to be had, isn't there? And you mentioned sort of Bournemouth potentially going down earlier and straight away, Philip Billing popped into my mind because I was at the Bournemouth game a few weeks ago and he just ran through our midfield, essentially. So you do wonder whether there is a world whereby Liverpool do look at those types of players that do get relegated eventually. But at the minute, it's hard to know who that is because about nine clubs could get relegated from the Premier League. Yeah, that's, so. yeah, that's, that's the thing, yeah. Well, again, that just shows you how long the list could be. It's, yeah. it's not just Liverpool. There's an all, all, a lot of teams. The other complication as well, you had a World Cup in the middle of the season, and normally loads of players move after the World Cup. Yeah, well, true. It's probably a little bit more movement than we expected in January. There's still nothing compared to what you get in the summer, so it's mm. going to be it's there's going to be loads of changes in the summer, and it won't just be Liverpool. 